Well, hello everyone and welcome to our ACE Your Application event. So this is our first session of the event and this is on personal statements and last minute tips. But a few housekeeping bits as we get started. So just to note that your microphone is muted. So if you would like to ask any questions, just pop them in the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen and we'll get to them at the end of this workshop. Um, and this session will be recorded and will be sent to you after this session session as well. So we are doing a workshop on personal statements and last minute tips. And this workshop is called I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Into Uni. So throughout this workshop, we are going to help these four celebrities get into uni and have a really good personal statement. My name is Angeli and I'm joined by my uh, colleague Natalie today. And we I both work Hello. <laughs> and we both work for Middlesex University in the education liaison and outreach. So let's help you write your personal statement. Um, we're going to use Marcus Rush Rashford first, who is a well-known footballer, plays for Manchester United, and he is a champion of free school meals, and he wants to study politics. Then we've got uh, Nicola Adams, who wants to be, who is a boxer and wants to do a degree in darts. And then we've got Malala, who is a female education activist who wants to study human rights. And then we've got Boris Johnson, who is a politician, as you, you should all know him. And he wants to do theatre performance degree. So your personal statement, hopefully most of you know this already, but it should be around 4,000 characters long, which is approximately 500 words. So one side of A4 types. And in this essay, we want you to talk about why you want to study that chosen course and what makes you really suitable for that course as well. And one of our top tips is to make sure that you write your personal statement when you're starting it, when you're drafting it in a Word document or on Google Docs. That way you can use spelling and grammar a check and once you're completely happy with it you can copy and paste it and pop it into UCAS but now we're going to hear from a couple of um, student ambassadors and they're going to tell you about their top tips on writing a personal statement. You can shape your personal statement just by answering five simple questions. Why do you want to study this school? This is the most important part of your personal statement, but also just the most fun. You get to talk about the reasons why you want to apply for the course that you do. Now it's time to talk about any work experience or what in turn that you've done. This is your chance to show off any key skills you have, such as teamwork or time management that you've gained outside of school. Let's talk about your time at school or college. This doesn't mean your grades, Erase them from your mind, your university will receive them automatically from you. This is your chance to talk about your own unique personal experience and to discuss how this has prepared you for university. Whether you love sports or you're part of an active drama society, the university will want to know about it. This is a fun section where you can talk about skills you've gained from taking part in school sports, clubs, and society. For example, you may have a role of responsibility or maybe a role as a team leader in a society, or maybe you took part in the music competition. Are there any other activities that you enjoy doing outside of school or college? Maybe you like reading or writing or painting. You might even be TikTok famous. Universities want to know this information and find out a little bit more about you, your interests, and your hobbies. Your conclusion statement is your chance to tie everything together. In my conclusion statement, I talked about how excited I was to go to university, meet new people, and join new society. Now, I've got an amazing group of friends, and I'm a member of Ultimate Frisbee. It's a real thing, I promise. Don't forget, if you are going to apply to Middlesex University, you can receive extra support. You're able to send your personal statement over to a team of experts and receive personalised feedback on it. Stay safe, good luck, and we will see you soon. And then we're just going to look at the structure of a personal statement. It is the rule of thirds. Um, 
the navy blue is really academic so it's why do you want to study whatever course it is what experience have you have what what have you been doing at school or college to prepare to go to university think about what you get involved with at school or college that may be mentoring other students being part of the um they might have sort of like a society there you might be a class rep all of those things would be able to help you with to, to write about in your personal statement and then there's the non non-academic is think about your work experience your voluntary work experience that you might have done and what activities you do outside school or college and then the final part is the conclusion statement which is literally two lines and shouldn't have many shouldn't have much relevant information in there the, the most important part is the two th the three thirds at the top of the personal statement um that's the most bit that they're going to read about you so it's important to make sure you're using all your transferable skills there so who actually reads your personal statement? So university admission staff, lecturers, so the people that who will be teaching that course, they want to know why you are enthusiastic about going onto that course. Here's a couple of examples for you to read, um, but it is super important to remember someone will be reading your personal statement. And also your personal statement is the only part of your UCAS application where your personality can shine through. So your UCAS application will have like your grade, your predicted grade, it'll have references from your teachers, it'll have obviously your course choices and your universities, but this is your chance to really showcase who you are and why you want to study that course through your personal statement. So why do you want to study that course? So out of these two um, examples, what do you think is best? I'll read them out to you and then you can, there'll be a poll for them. The reason why I want to study for a degree is because of the following reasons. I want to get a higher degree and better qualification. I want to gain more experience and knowledge. I want to improve my political skills and I want to have a good career later. Or number two, I want to study a politics degree because I'm passionate about having a positive impact on people's lives. I'd love to be able to use my degree to affect positive change within our government. So what do you think, what, what one is the, is the best one? Yep, number two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks Angela, are they all done? Yep. Yep, so number two is the answer, is the correct answer. Because number one has got, I don't know if you can see the actual screen, you might just be listening to it, but there are, um, it has got a dot dot, a quote, and it also has got spelling mistakes in there as well. But number two is showing why they want to do a politics degree and how they want to make positive change in the future and to impact on people's lives. Um, so it's a that's a that's what number that's what number you should be choosing out of those two statements. And luckily, most people did choose number two in the poll mm. as well. Okay, so what work experience or voluntary have you done? So now we're going to take a look at Nicola Adams. Now she wants to study dance at university. So let's have a look at the two different examples. This year I took part in a dance competition where I learned great teamwork skills as I had to do I had to work with my partner to create new routines every week. Working in this challenging environment and within a close knit team greatly improved my communication skills. Or number two, I took part in a dance show and it was hard and grueling and tough, but it went well and I found it joyful and I think it would be good if I learned more about it. So I'm going to launch another poll and in that you should answer whether you think Nicola Adams should put in example one or example two into her personal statement. So I'll give you a few seconds to do that. Okay, I'm going to end the poll now 
And I can see that most of you have chosen um, answer an example one. An example one is the correct one, because in this she talks about, yes, what she did outside of school, what her work experience and voluntary work was. She talks about what skills she gained, so great team working skills, how they had to create new routines. She talks about how even though it was quite a challenging environment, she improved her communication skills. So whilst in um, example two, all she really reflects on is how hard and grueling it was. She never really talks about what she learned from it, what kind of skills she gained from it, and how that will help her in the future. So how has your work, has your experience at school or college prepared you for university? So we use Malala now, who wants to study? Human rights law. Pardon? Human rights law. Yeah, human rights and law. Um, so is it number one or number two? My school campaign for get for girls to be in education has prepared me for studying a human rights degree as it taught me the value of education and the importance of studying of, of standing up for one's rights or when I was at school I was a I was a passionate advocate for female education leading this project gave me the skills experience and insight I needed to study human rights at university and furthered my passion for standing up for one's beliefs so we're just going to launch the poll now what do you think number one Okay. They finished, Angela? Yeah, they finished. Okay. Now. So what, what did we get the most for? We got most for example two. Okay. And what do you think? What do you I, think is right? Yeah, I think it was example two. Okay, yeah. Number one's not bad though. Number one is not bad, but number two talks about they're passionate, they're advocate for female education, talking about why they want to go into human rights, their, their skills and experience that they're going to bring, and their insights. So number two is the better of the two, but number one would pass as well. Yeah, this one's a little bit of a trick question, but number two is the slightly better one. Um, are you involved with any sports clubs or activities at school? So now we're going to look at Boris Johnson. So remember, Boris Johnson wants to uh, study theatre arts at degree. So the first example is recently I took part in the school play where I got the chance to experience all aspects of theatre from staging to performing. This was an invaluable experience for me as I learned to work as a team to type deadlines and we achieved a shared goal. Or the second example, in school, I enjoy performing. I always love a joke with my mates, always entertaining. I'm pretty great at it. I'm fantastic at improvisation. In fact, I don't even need a script. Also, one of my skills is pointing and umming. This one is a little bit tongue in cheek, by the way, but I'm gonna now launch the poll and let me know which example you think Boris should pop into his personal statement. Example one or example two? Okay, I'll give you a couple more seconds. Okay, and I'm going to end the poll. And most of you chose example one. And yes, example one is the better of the two. As he talks about what um, experience he did, what he gains from it. So from staging to performing, he talked about what kind of skills he learned about working as a team, working to tight deadlines. So it is a really good example. Whilst in obviously example two, he talks about, you know, he loves to have a joke with his mates, uh, which is very colloquial. He talks about he, how he's fantastic at improvising, how he loves pointing and umming. So obviously that's more of a jokey um, example. Remember that your personal statement is still an academic piece of work. It still needs to be formally written. And even though we talk about you want to get your personality across, you've got to make sure you're still doing it in, in an academic and formal way.
So think about the um, other activities you're interested in outside school or college. Have you, what have you been involved with before? So we're now going to look at uh, Marcus again. And what one of these two would you, you do you think is better? I'm really I'm, I really like helping people. I've taken part in some community projects that made a big difference, which felt really good. And this has helped me to decide that politics is the right career for me. Or outside of school, I'm a champion for young people. I believe they should have access to basic necessities such as food and education. Recently, I contacted my local MP and as a result, we were able to change the policy around free school meals. This has given me further motivation to study a degree in politics. So we're just going to launch the poll. What one do you think is, is the better one? Are we there? Angela, yeah? Yeah, I reckon we're almost there. I'll end the poll now. Okay. Thanks. Um, we got mostly example twos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so number two is is the the most is the most relevant, but number one is not too bad either. But number two talks about what they've done outside school. They've championed for young people. They believe they have that everyone should have the same access. Um, and they've recent and out of that doing outside of school, they've contacted their local MP and obviously have worked on that and that's why they want to do it as well so yes number two is the better of the two but number one's not too bad either okay now we're going to look at the conclusion so we're looking at nicola adams's conclusion so her first example is i believe i would excel at as a dance student at university, thanks to my experience in dance competitions, my lifelong passion for being on stage and my skills as a team player. Or example two, to conclude, I believe I would be a great dance student because I have danced in lots of competitions before, such as the time when I was on Strictly Come Dancing, where I also had to work as a team player. I also know what I am driven. I also know that I am driven and motivated thanks to my career in competitive boxing, where I have trained seven days a week, 10 hours a day. So I'll launch the poll and let me know which one you think that Nicola should use as her conclusion. Okay, I will end the poll now. So most of you said example two. Now I can see why you may have said that, but actually as a conclusion, example one is the better one. So like Natalie said before, when she was talking about the rule of thirds, the small little third at the bottom, which is only two to three sentences, is your conclusion, because it's summarizing everything that you've said already. So example two is great if she added it into her first two thirds, where, because in here, she's talked about new things that we didn't know about before. Before, she hasn't spoken about her competitive boxing, where she trains seven days a week for 10 hours a day we want her to add that in further up the um her personal statement and we want her to use num example one as a nice way of summarizing and bringing it all together so that's a key thing to remember when you're writing your personal statements is to a include a conclusion and make sure it's short it's snappy and it leaves the lasting impression you want to leave on the tutor So some of the do's and don'ts is start early um, to have your um, prepare several drafts. It, it wouldn't be uncommon for someone to have six or seven drafts of their personal statement. Somebody in the um, has asked a, in a question as when they should start that if they're currently in year 12. And I'd be telling them to start that around June time. Your school or college will will um, give you the heads up on that, really. And they will start to support you around the summertime. So that should be a good point. You could have at least one done before you go off for the summer. That means you have a great summer holidays. And when you go back, you've got your first draft already done to, um, to hand in for someone to help you with it. Um, you know, think about, um, just think about everything you've done, your, all of your transferable skills that you've done while you're studying what you've done. Research the, the area, the topic area, that whatever it is you want to study. Um, and if you're applying for a joint honours degree, like drama and um, English, don't forget to talk about both subjects equally. Don't make it too short. Don't quote, don't Google interesting quotes, really. Make sure you spell check it. 
and start your personal statement in Word. Always do your personal statement in Word because that does your word count. And if you if you download some download something like Grammarly, that will help you make sure you're, you're sort of like it makes sense a bit and it will show you all of your spelling and grammatical errors as well in there. So we are here to help you. So we have lots of different guides to help you with your personal statement on our website and on our YouTube channel. So you can literally go on to that, this YouTube link, I'll show you in a moment, and it's a five minute personal statement workshop on what to include delivered by um, two of our colleagues, Rosie and Sophie. Um, and you can also download our personal statement pack. Um, there'll be a link to that at the bottom of this YouTube video, which is a step by step guide on what to include in your personal statement, very similar to the workshop that we did today. So I will click on this so you'll be able to see the workshop as well. So you can see it pop up and then at the bottom there will be um, there's our five minute workshop and there's also a link to our personal statement booklet there as well. Questions. Okay, um, Angie, I've answered some of the questions. Okay. Um, obviously, there was one about when to start make, doing their personal statement for next year. I've got one here saying, I want to go to university, but I don't know how to use UCAS. Can you help with that? If you go to uh, UCAS, they have got lots and lots of videos of how to apply to university. It's all quite straightforward. You will need to have all of your personal, your personal statement, all of your qualifications, all of your personal details, you add those there and your referee, pay, make your payment, submit your application, and then you should hear from them, is what I would say. But we, there are some, um, there is a video on our YouTube channel around how to apply as well for UCAS um, from our last open day that I created, that should help you with that. Um, the one on top, would it be possible to ask whether it is accepted Exception in the statement to add quotes. No, as I said, we don't use quotes and references. No, um, obviously there'll be reference. You don't really use either of those in your personal statement. Are our transcripts for our last year required to apply? Transcripts will only be applied if you're applying for year two of a course. Then that would you would need to contact admissions for that. And on UCAS, you apply for year two, and then they will ask for your transcripts and a reference from wherever you've currently studied. Um, what do you want to ask whether it's accepted? I know. Can I write two? No, you can only write one personal statement. So that's why it's important that you get it right the first time. Is this saying that's for postgraduate? Um, it depends on what course. If you're applying for something like social work, then yes, it is the same for postgraduate. But whatever um, university you apply to, whether it be part time, full time, you, through UCAS as an international student, and you will have to have some sort of personal statement. So the structure will be similar, yes. Um, what's next? How long will it take to get an answer about after applying? Depends on when you apply, because the deadline is coming up um, for early applications, um, then, then it may take slightly longer, but hopefully you should hear with us from us within a week or so, whether that be for additional information, maybe to invite to interview, or whatever the decision is. Um, what's next? How would you upload a portfolio? You will get told all about that when once you apply to upload a portfolio, or if you go to one of those sessions, we're doing some sessions on portfolios. We've got fashion, fashion, interior design, and product design tomorrow, and then this evening we've got of all of the visual arts taking part, including graphics, photography, illustration, 3D animation, film. I think that's all yeah. of them. And yeah. they're, they're starting tonight as well. That's on tonight. That's that you can look on to. Um, and then how do you use UCAS? UCAS, if you go to the UCAS website, as I said, they've got all the information there. If you're applying through a school or college, um, then they will help with your UCAS form. I'm not a college, can I apply to uni? Yes, you can, and you still you still apply through UCAS the same as every other anybody else. I want to apply in 24. No. So if I want to apply in 24 and to leave a um, to leave a next year, how safe? Um yeah, you, you don't apply for 2024 until 
the new UCAS cycle opens, which usually is, well, it opens in May, but you can't actually submit until September or October your 2024 application. Uh, how important is it? Work experience and per for a person. Um, if you've got work experience, then obviously you can put that in your personal statement. If you haven't, it's think about what the things you've been doing at school or college or even volunteering type work that you've done. Um, that should help you with that. Let me for someone who didn't join. Yeah, I mean, think about um, what, what interests do you have? You must have some sort of interests. Think about how you can use some of those interests. If you're into reading or, you know, you might be, they're just that there are other things that you can include on there and think about what you did think about your personal statement use it smartly because you may have done things when you were slightly younger they don't need to know it was when you was younger but just think about clubs or anything else you may have been involved with in the last couple of um well before you started that school for instance just be smart with your personal statement um what else we got angeli um, when will I have to send the fashion design portfolio? So it is dependent on the university. Each university will have their own kind of deadline for that. So once you've applied, they'll send you more information about that. But we do have um, a fashion portfolio session coming up tomorrow. So you're more than welcome to join that as well. <laughs> Are the statements the most important part for a year one? Um, personal statements, are, regardless of whether you're applying for year one or year two, um, an academic or the admissions students will be reading the personal statement. What is the deadline for midway free applications? Currently, obviously, the early deadline is coming up on the 25th of January. So the earlier you apply, the better. It is a very popular course. Um, it's just important that you apply it early is what I would say and do your research on midwifery. But joining us um, at five o'clock today will be Caroline, who will talk about interviews for nursing and midwifery. She's the admissions tutor for that area. So come over and join us and I'll be hosting Caroline then. I'm not in course with anyone. She's like, can I survive? Yeah, you can. As long as you've got your qualifications and you meet the requirements for the course, then you can apply through UCAS a lot of people go um i'm applying for i don't know say they are applying for nursing um and they have worked in um maybe in a cafe or something like that think about all of the skills that you have this, this applies to anyone really actually think about all your communication skills you're dealing with the public you're part of the team you may be handling money you're so you're trustworthy think of all of those things that you've done what whilst you um on your work experience that you think is not relevant, but it could be relevant. If you are unable to get a um, if you've been at school or college recently, then it should it will be it will come from it has to be an education um, reference. But if you're currently employed, um, then they will review it for they will look at your uh, your your employment reference. Um, also, because we have a little bit of time, um, and if some of you are not aware of our sessions that are coming up, so this is a part of our ACER application event, and we have sessions coming up for nursing and midwifery, so that's straight after this, five till six. We've got a social work session today at six till seven. We've got a portfolio workshop, like Natalie said, in visual arts, so that will include graphics, animation, illustration. So if you want a specific link to any session, let me know and I'll pop it in the Q&A button because um, we've got a little bit of time so I don't mind doing that. Yeah there's another question here about um, admissions. With admissions questions like that do I need to attend college before I have a diploma level three? We would need to look at e each application separately so what I would say is if you go on to our onto the, the course page for the course um, and at the bottom there'll be um, a person come up that is a real person put in your qualifications and one of the admissions people will come back to you with a definite answer on what they would accept for whatever course you're applying for usually you'd come in with a level three qualification plus 
um, a GCSE in English and Maths at grade four or above. Um, and sometimes maybe the five GCSEs, it just depends on each um, subject, will, each course will have entry requirements on their web page. And the sessions tomorrow, we've got the portfolio workshop on like fashion, interiors, product design, that's four till five. We've got primary education interview prep, five till six, and performing arts auditions. So if you're doing dance, theatre arts, music, that's six till seven. So if there is a specific uh, session that you'd like to go to, just pop it in the Q&A button and I'll send you the link to that session. Mm -hmm. And we have a maths lecture actually on Thursday at 2 p.m. at the university. If you want to come um, and to the maths lecture, um, we'll have guest speaker there talking about um, sustainability and how maths is used in climate change. Yeah, it'll be a really interesting. They've got like hair dryers and all sorts going on. So it should be a really good session. And then also on Wednesday, we've got campus tours and in-person personal statement help from myself and Natalie. So if you did want to come onto campus, you can meet us if you can bring your draft personal statements and get a tour of the campus as well. Um, we've just had another question come in. Can I add volunteering? So yeah, absolutely. You can add any volunteering stuff into your personal statement as well. You can also, you know, within that talk about what skills you've learned and what transferable skills will help you from that volunteering into the course you'd like to study as well. What time tomorrow, Angela? What time? For which session? What, what session? Yeah. <laughs> if you're coming to campus, it's in the afternoon, isn't it's it? It's on Wednesday. On Wednesday. At what time? Is so it it's so the campus stores, they start from 12 30 mm -hmm. till 6 p.m. But mm -hmm. for the personal statement support, that's four till six p.m. On Wednesday. On Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Is there any more questions? Oh, Ooh, one yeah. more question. It's fear. Oh, I was wondering how many computers. Uh, I would um, say to come to the session tomorrow at 6 p.m. online with uh, where we'll have um, theater arts, um, dance, and music all in attendance, and they will be able to answer that question for you. Okay, I'm just sending a link to that one. And yeah, it's 6 mm. till 7 p.m. We have a session on law. No. Not at the moment. No, they'll be at the next open down the 25th of February um, if you wanted to come along to that. Um, but that question around having a level six professional classical ballet, again, I would join the session tomorrow. Um, where they will definitely be able to answer that question if it is dance or theatre arts that you're wanting to study. What if I, if you do have a professional school reference, can I apply? Um, it depends on if you're currently working, as we said, if you're working, then your reference will be coming from your employer. It would need to be a professional reference. Uh, journalism and media. If it's journalism and media you're wanting to apply for, I would contact, um, go to the course page and at the bottom, a little page, a little button will pop up. If you put all of that information, the admissions team will be able to answer that question for you. Or if you come to campus tours on Wednesday, then the admissions team will be there as well. They will definitely be able to answer that question then. If you do. Um, yeah, you still apply, but you will need a reference. Everybody has to have a reference, whether that be an employer or a school or college. Just can you send the link for the fashion? Yeah, I'm doing that right now. Thanks. How do I access the recording? Um, next week, after all of the sessions have happened this week, um, emails will go out to anybody that attended, and there'll be a playlist that you can watch everything back on. Yes, yeah, so there'll be like a YouTube playlist, so you'll be able to. But that's watch. not going out until Monday next week. Any other questions? Or if anyone wants any links to any of the sessions that are coming up?
Are we done, Angela? Uh, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> references when applying for truth. Yeah, yeah what will happen is on your UCAS application, anyone that applies for full time, it, it will um, you will have to put in um, a, con a contact, in, a, an email address for somebody for them to contact um, before UCAS submit it to us. Um, if you're currently at school or college, then it will definitely have to come through your school or college. But if you're applying as an individual, you can put a referee down um, if you're unable, if, you, if you're not employed, you'd get a character reference, wouldn't you? Just depends on what you're applying for. If they want something different, then they will ask for it. Um, one of the screens has got it on there. I haven't got I'm ready to have um, um I will send the nursing one. Do you have a link session for me? Uh, do you have a link session for the BA professional practice arts and creative industries? Specialisms. I've probably got some link. Hang on, do <coughs> what one is that? Um, can you be a bit more specific? Because we've got three different ones. So we've got either a session in performing arts, which will cover performing arts, um, theatre arts, dance, and music, or there's a portfolio workshop on fashion interiors and product design, or there's another portfolio workshop on film, visual arts, animation, graphics, and illustration. So we split it into three different workshops. So if you can be a bit more specific... Um, and then just go to the one that is most relevant to you, and we'll let you know. For my training provider. Yes. Yeah, you put, you'd put your training provider on there. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Deanna, if you can be a bit more specific with your which um, session you'd like to attend. Alternatively, I can send you all three links um, as well. If you kind of want to just pop into all of them for a bit, you're more than welcome to. Maybe I'll do that. Do you have any more? Um, I'm not, Dara, I'm not, I'm not 100% on that. Again, if you join the session tomorrow at 6pm, because they're all three teams are there, you will definitely get that question answered about um, if you join the acting course, is it possible to add song without necessarily using dance, you would, um, they'll be able to answer that question. Okay. Well, um, yeah, so let me send you the link for that as well. Uh, yeah, social work, I will send you that link now. Yeah, the social work session is on at today at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. Have we got any more questions? <laughs> and yeah, any more? before we go somebody's raised their hand you need yeah, to type it in, if you can type it in yeah pop it in the q a button um angie i'm going to leave you a thing mm -hmm. is that okay yeah yeah absolutely yeah, thank you so much Nat. thank you bye bye um is there a way of email questions um, so if you do have any questions regarding like personal statements or any tips, what we recommend is that if you go onto the um, Middlesex University webpage on there, you'll be able to ask any questions. There's like little chat boxes. So that's the best way to ask questions around personal statements, admissions, student finance, anything like that. <coughs> Um, I can send you a link to it if that makes it a little bit easier as well. So this is, I'm sending you one to the course page, but um, you'll be able to find what you need from there. Uh, okay. Um, 
how can I redeem points for a dance exam? Um, I'm not quite sure about that one. I don't know the specifics of every course, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you the link to the um, performing arts audition workshop tomorrow. So that will be the lecturers from dance, theatre, arts and music, and they will be the best people to answer that question. But I can send that over to you. Is there any more questions? Does anyone want to ask anything else? We've got about 15 minutes before the next session starts. So the next two sessions will be nursing midwifery, interview prep. So if you don't already have, <coughs> if you don't already have a, um, a link to that, let me know and I'll send it you. Yep, that's absolutely fine. And then um, also the other session will be the portfolio workshop on visual arts, graphics, film, um, animation, and illustration. And then at six o'clock, it'll be social work. So let me send the link for the nursing and midwifery one. So if you want to head over, you can do. Um, okay. What have we got? I'm applying for nursing. So could I select five different choices for university or one? So yes, you could choose five different universities that all do nursing, or you could do maybe three courses that do child nursing, want to do adult nursing. But yes, you have five choices in total. Uh, what link did you want? Sorry, Faith specifically so the midwifery session is taking place at five o'clock I will send you the link for that Vimby go uh, the top tips for writing a personal statement for drama so what I recommend is that you put in you try and showcase your enthusiasm to showcase why you would like to study drama and specifically what interests you have what would you like to develop any specific skills would you like to go into puppetry or circus skills for example um, would you like to develop your kind of how you vocalize things so what can, what would you like to develop Develop. what are you most excited for when you go to university what experience do you have so if you have specific experience doing um kind of any shows any kind of drama productions at school if you're trained in dance in music and singing in any instruments that would be really good to add in um, and also why you'd like to do it. What are your career ambitions? Would you like to be a fully trained actor in theatre, for example? Those are the type of things that I recommend that are the top tips for writing a drama personal statement. Um, are there any more questions? I'll give it another minute or so, or if anyone wants any specific links to any sessions, please let me know. So like I said, the next two sessions at five o'clock are portfolio workshop. So film, visual arts, graphics, um, animation, illustration. Or if you wanna to go to the nursing and midwifery interview prep, that's at five till six. And then we've also got social work interview prep six or seven today. And then we've got sessions tomorrow. So we've got portfolio workshop, fashion, interiors, product design. We've got primary education interview prep, five till six. And we work performing arts audition, dance, theatre arts and music. Um, is there a link to the general acting course session? So um, the link that I will send you is the performing arts one. So that will have, so we don't have just a general acting course, we have a theatre arts course. But I'll send you to the link to that one. What are your tips for the interview stage? Now, if you're applying for drama, you won't have an interview, you'd have an audition. So obviously, as you would go into any other audition, making sure you're prepared, making sure you understand the task, making sure you feel calm. Those would be my top tips for the audition phase for your course as you want to go into more of the drama and theatre art side of things. No, so there's no, it's not an interview, it's an audition.
Okay. Any other questions? Or anyone else want any more links? We'll give it another minute or so. If there's any last minute burning questions. Uh, some some tips for the fashion design personal statement. So what I recommend is that if you talk about kind of your experience at school or college, so if you've done like textiles or something whilst you're at school or college, and um, also what, what interests you? Is there a specific type of fashion? Do you want to like talk about sustainable fashion? talk about the fast fashion industry, if there's any particular brands or artists that you really like that you'd want to maybe emulate. Um, and also talk about if you've done, like if you create your own clothes already, you can talk about that. Um, so there's lots of different things to talk about to make sure it's specific, but also showcasing your kind of general skills. So where your crazy comes from, why you're interested in fashion design and not, um, animation for example so where does that stem from as well to make it a bit more specific i'll give it another minute because i always say that and there's always more questions um but remember if you know that you have any questions you know this isn't the only time we have sessions going on all week we you can come onto campus and see us in person um and you can also ask uh, through the chat buttons on the website as well um, but I'd like to say thank you to everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, thank you to Nat uh, for also joining us today. And I hope you all have a lovely evening and a lovely rest of the week as well. Thank you. Bye.